Good afternoon, YouTube. Um, so today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm doing a gun review. I haven't done one in a while. But this is kind of a long-term review, as the title is going to say, of the Taurus Raging Bull. This is in 44 Magnum. I bought this gun about uh, five years ago. Put probably about a thousand rounds through it. That's it. Um, I forgot it's got a double, got a double catch for the cylinder on this thing. That's weird, so you gotta push that forward and then move that guy too. But anyways, um, so my thoughts on it. Um, so first off, this is not our only Taurus firearm. Um, this is my wife's, uh, I think they call this the governor. Shoots, yeah, or the judge. Shoots uh, 410 shotgun shells and... 45 Colt. Now this gun's a fun gun to shoot. It's actually, with 45 Colt, I make the modest loads with cast bullets, and it's actually a tack driver, despite the sights, because the sights open the action so everyone thinks I'm being safe. Um, the sights on it are kind of very rudimentary, but but still, nonetheless, it it's a tack driver. This thing is also a tack driver, but my problem with this gun is I load so many different loads for 44 Magnum and 44 Special. It's all over the place, so you just kind of got to, like, putting hot load in there and know it's where it's going to hit and stuff like that. Negative things about this gun. Um, like primer strikes, um, I find with uh, Winchester primers, it... Uh, all, well, I'm not going to say often, but you will get light strikes and they won't go off. So I tend to go with um, federal primers. They seem to work better. Uh, I don't know. But as far as, apart from that, like, it's a beast of a gun. Um, I can put, it can take hot loads. This same gun is available in 454 Casual, which is quite a bit more pow powerful than 44 Magnum. But I can load these as hot this gun will handle them, and still, it's you can shoot this thing all day long. It's a beast of a gun. Six inch barrel, uh, or six and a half, I think. Uh, it's just a beast. Compared to this lowly Smith & Wesson Model 69, it's also 44 Magnum, a five shooter. Uh, I think they call this the K-frame. Someone correct me if I'm wrong about that. But anyways, this thing, if I put those hot loads in here, this gun will handle, it's a strong gun, but holy crap, does that bite you. Like, it's... It's a can can. It's only a four inch barrel, four and eight. So that's the smallest barrel we can have here in Canada. But anyways, it's this thing's a fun little gun. But this thing, I can shoot like hot, hot loads. Like I forget what my load is for this with cast bullets, but it's a a healthy dose of uh, Hercules twenty four hundred or IMR or whoever makes it for twenty four hundred now. But it's uh, yeah, and the fireball that comes out of this thing. In slow motion, just coming out of these uh, ports here, just and the ports probably keep keep the uh, muzzle flip down. But it's a uh, it's a beast of gun. It was cheap. I think I paid, I want to say six hundred dollars Canadian, brand new for this thing, and that wasn't bad compared to this. I think this was, I think eight hundred and sixty nine ninety nine Canadian. This is a fun gun. If we're allowed to carry a gun in Canada, I would keep this in my vehicle because you load it with some. Uh, 44 special rounds. It's a nice little gun. Either that or 379. Anyways, but this is more about this gun. Uh, it's handy because in Canada, transporting guns, you got the built in lock. Um, yeah, it's. I haven't had any problems except the late primer strikes, but uh, tourist quality is pretty good, I think. Um, I mean, they're made in Brazil. Hasn't rusted, so it's a good quality stainless. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, if you want a giant hand cannon, get one of these. I kind of want to buy one 454 Casual, but they're hard to find here. And they're going to be even harder to find in the next year. But anyways, take it easy, YouTube.